Yeah, so I just want to thank you for all that you do. Uh, I just got a question on the law. Um, yes. I'm, I'm very confused. Um, I'm not. You're very I, confused about the law. Okay. I'm here. I'm trying to hear you so far. Yeah. Um, I just got a question. Um, because I was speaking to some people and they were saying that um, in Romans three, that yeah. um, the it shows that the law still exists and therefore we are. Uh, Still to keep it. So I just wanted to find out like, what yeah. what law are we under exactly? Well, if you have your Bible ready, do you have your Bible ready? Are you sitting, by the way, or are you driving in a car? I'm I'm sitting. I, I got my Bible right here. Okay. The law that you're under, go to First Corinthians nine twenty one. First Corinthians nine twenty one. What law are we under? He's asking, are we under law and which law? Paul tells you, First Corinthians nine twenty one. Okay, I'm going to read it. Go ahead. <laughs> to them that are without law as without law being not without law to god but under the law to christ now stop right there now i wish do me a favor scream in the mic when you talk because you're faint but did you hear it did you yes. hear it said when i go to preach to people who are lawless who could care louder, care less about the law and they live just the way they want i don't condemn them and say you got to follow the law i first win them to christ but I myself am under the law of Christ. I follow the law of Jesus Christ, not the law of Moses. Okay, so. But um, I'm going to give you a couple more. Okay. okay. Now I go to Galatians 6, verses 1 to 2, and pay attention to verse 2. Galatians 6. six verse one, two, six. Shout in the mic like you're upset at your wife. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, bro. We'll do. I like your accent, bro. Are you like. I'm Trinidadian. What kind of accent? I'm Trinidadian. What's up, man? That was good, bro. <laughs> I, I I can't do Trinidad, but I know about Jamaica. Come back to Jamaica. <laughs> what's old is what's new. <laughs> but no, uh, I know. All right, but anyway, Galatians 6, 1 or 2. Come back to Jamaica. Shove up. All right. You're laughing right. at me too much, bro. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. All right. Galatians okay. 6, 1 or 2. Right. Brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, scream in that mic, sir. Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So, whose law are we under? Christ's law. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew 28 19 to 20, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Why do you think you have 27 books of the New Testament filled with instructions for Christians? Because that's the law of Christ. Okay. Do you have okay. a follow-up question? Yes. Um, so uh, people ask me. Get him in the mic, man. Irie, Irie, Shaba. Uh, okay, I, I, I'll do my best, bro. I'll do my best. So people, okay, so I speak to people on work. And they tell me that uh, we are still under the, the law of the Ten Commandments because the law of the Ten Commandments and the Mosaic law are two different laws. Well, I agree. Um, we are. Right. They're not wrong. Do you know why? But why? Because every commandment in the law and the Ten Commandments is repeated in the New Testament. But this is where they're going to try to catch you. They think they're smart. Yeah, but the Fourth Commandment, honor the uh, Sabbath. Uh, <laughs> we got you. <laughs> we got you. Yeah, that that that's exactly what I'm. What you I'm want me to bury you. that, Irie? Irie, please, because they tell me that. Yeah, um, why don't Why don't we keep the seven day Sabbath? That's, that's right. See, they we got you. Exodus twenty eight to eleven. The Ten okay. Commandments is still binding on Christians. They're right because the New Testament says we still follow those Ten Commandments. So why don't we keep the Sabbath? See, we got you, man. Shama. Okay. This tells you that they don't understand the Bible because you do keep the Sabbath. I keep the Sabbath. In fact, guys, there's a short clip from one of my sessions that has been uploaded where I'm talking about the Sabbath is, and you should see the comment section. There's not a day that goes by where I don't get a Sabbatarian attacking me, and I'm always calling them out. Come on, StreamYard, refute me. But no, they want to act brave in the comment section. Brother, we do keep the Sabbath. 
but we don't keep the Sabbath given to Israel. We keep yeah. God's Sabbath. Now, do you want me to break it down for you? Sure, bro. I'm going to have to read the Bible because your mic sucks. Can I buy you a mic? <laughs> I'm sorry. Here, bro. I'm let sorry. me get the verses for you guys. Guys, you want me to answer this thoroughly? Are we Christians obligated to keep the Ten Commandments? Yes. So why don't we keep the Sabbath? We do keep the Sabbath. But which Sabbath do we keep? Here, let me line it up for you so you guys don't think I'm, I'm lying. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. So now you Sabbatarians, stop misrepresenting me. Stop lying about me. Stop lying and saying that we Christians don't keep the fourth commandment. You're lying. I've never said that. Please represent my argument and then refute me. Don't attack straw man. Exodus 20, 8 to 11. We do keep this, but if you guys are reading carefully, you'll see there is the original Sabbath and the Sabbath enjoined on Israel, which is a shadow, not the reality. What do I mean? Let's see if you're going to catch it. Exodus 20, 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your God. In it you shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter, your male or your female slave or your cattle or your sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Now do you see? Why they're supposed to rest on the seventh day? To imitate God, right? Right. Because notice it says, for in six days. See, like your God, who works six days, but then rested on the seventh, imitate your God and follow his pattern. Work six days, rest on the seventh. Now, keep that in mind. I'm going to go slow. I got to read it for you because your mic is terrible. But God's seventh day began, but it didn't end, right? Unlike Israel, six days Rest seven, seven ends, they have to repeat it, right? Right. But with God, if you read Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, with God, when the seventh day began for God, it didn't end for him. It began, but it didn't end. This is why I want everyone, including you, read Genesis 1 carefully. The six days, you'll see it says there was evening, there was morning, day one. There was evening, there was morning, day two. There was evening, there was morning, day six. And yet when the seventh day began, it doesn't say there was evening, there was morning, day seven. Because the seventh day began, but unlike the other days where it had a beginning and end, the seventh day did not end. Oh. Okay, now are you following me? Yeah, I am following you, bro. So after he finished creation, he rested on the seventh day. It began, but it didn't end. So I want you to think a little deeply as I unpack this. If it didn't end, that means God is still in the Sabbath day, right? Yeah, yeah, he is. And that means the Sabbath day is every day, right? Yeah. You know when his seventh day will end? Uh, I guess at the end of the world. Yes. When Jesus comes, then it will end and a new heaven, new earth will be ushered in. Whoa. Wow. Okay, but now I'm going to prove my point. Just be patient. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready, bro. Okay, now, to further prove to you, Israel's Sabbath day is a model after God's Sabbath day. Let me give you another verse. Exodus 31, 12 to 17. Shabba! <laughs> Why are you laughing at me, bro? <laughs> I'm laughing with you, bro. But I got to laugh first. <laughs> right? Right. Now, right. do you see what's on the screen? Yeah. Okay, read it for me. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, But as for you, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You shall surely keep my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am Yahweh, who makes you holy. Therefore you shall keep the Sabbath, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death, for whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. Six days work may be done, but on the seventh day, there is a Sabbath of complete rest. Holy to Yahweh, whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. So the sons of Israel 
shall keep the Sabbath to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and my sons of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Do you see the connection again with God creating in six days and resting on the seventh day? Yeah. Okay, so everyone caught it? God is saying, just like I worked in six days and rested on the seventh, you too will do likewise. So what's the point? Let's see if you're catching it. The point being, the Sabbath of Israel is modeled after God's Sabbath, right? Right. So I created six days, but rest on seventh as a model for you. Now, the difference obviously is, the difference is, God's seventh day is not repeatable because he doesn't create again six days and rest on the seventh, create again six days, rest on the seventh. But with Israel, it's repeatable. Six days, seventh day, and six days. Seven, and then there's the Sabbath year. Every seventh year, they had to stop tilling the ground and let the ground rest. Okay? Right. Okay. So now that we learned, what is the original Sabbath? The Sabbath days of Israel or God's Sabbath day? God's Sabbath day. Okay, now watch where I'm going to go with this. According to Colossians 2, 16 and 17, the Sabbath days, the holy days, the feast, they are not the reality. They are a shadow. The reality is Jesus Christ. Wow. Here it is, guys. Pay attention here. Colossians 2, 16 17. Pay attention, brethren. I'm going in depth on this. Colossians 2, 16 and 17. I hope Lori and everyone else is benefiting. Colossians 2, 16 and 17. <clears throat> Therefore, no one is to judge you in food and drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. Don't let these guys condemn you because you don't keep their Sabbath. Why? Because these things, which are only a shadow, of what is to come, but the substance, the reality, belongs to Christ. You understand what it's saying? Yeah. Meaning Israel's Sabbath, their festivals, were a shadow pointing to a greater reality. In other words, when you see a shadow, you know someone's going to show up, right? Right. If you see a shadow of a dog, what do you expect to show up? The dog. If you see a shadow of a dog, what do you know it's coming? A dog. If you see a shadow of a cat, what do you know it's coming? A cat. You got it. So what Paul is saying is, if you really understand the Old Testament, you're going to expect Jesus to show up, not someone else. Because right. the Old Testament is a shadow telling you who to expect. So when he shows up, oh, there he is. We saw his shadow. Right. Right? Right. So now the Sabbath is a shadow that Christ is the reality of. So then what does the Sabbath point to that Christ fulfills? The Sabbath is meant to affirm that you rest in God and trust in him and his provision to save you when you trust in Christ. And when you trust in Christ, you now enter into your everlasting rest, God's rest day, which is every day till the end of the age. Mm. Here it is, Colossians 4, verses 1 to 12. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm sorry, Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 12. So I do observe the Sabbath. I observe the Sabbath of God, not the one given to Israel, because I know what Israel's Sabbath pointed to, entering into God's rest day by faith in Christ and remaining united to Christ so that he becomes my everlasting rest my Sabbath day, every day until he summons me or until he returns. Mm. Here it is, Hebrews 4, 1 to 12. Okay, I'm not making it up, but I got to break it down. Hold on. Hebrews 4, 1 to 12. Let's break it down. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Look what it says here. Therefore, let us fear, lest while a promise remains of entering his rest, his rest, God's rest, entering God's rest, any one of you may seem to have fallen short of it. Don't fall short and fail to enter his rest. Well, how do you fall short and not enter? By not believing. For indeed, we have had good news, gospel proclaimed to us, just as they also, 
But the word that was heard did not profit them. See, when they heard the word, it didn't benefit them. Why? Because they did not believe it with faith among those who heard. So if you hear the gospel and don't believe in it, it doesn't benefit you. It brings condemnation, right? Right. For we who have believed enter that rest. What rest do we enter? We enter God's rest. Ah, when? When you're believing in Christ. Do you see it? Right. Just as he, God said, listen, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now watch what rest he's talking about. He's not going to quote Genesis 2, 1 to 3. For he has spoken somewhere in this way concerning the seventh day. And God rested on the seventh day. Did you catch it? Right. Right. God rested on the seventh day from all his works. So what day is God's rest? The Sabbath day that he entered, right? Right. When did God enter that day? After you finished creation. Bam! So when you enter that day, when you believe in Christ. And again, now watch, it's going to go deeper. And again, in this passage, they shall not enter my rest. Now watch what he says. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had good news proclaimed to him, he's talking about the time of Moses, that those people at the time of Moses did not enter God's rest, even when they entered into Israel. When Joshua brought them into Israel, they entered the land, right? Yeah. But he says, even when they entered the land, they still didn't enter God's rest because the land of Israel wasn't God's rest. God's rest is entering into his everlasting peace and rest by faith in Christ. Oh. So though they entered the land of Israel... God constantly punished them, disciplined them, had nations attack them and kill them and dispossess them because they failed to be faithful to God. So they never experienced God's true everlasting Sabbath, everlasting rest. Right. Okay, so let's finish it. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly had good news proclaimed to them failed to enter because of disobedience, even though they had entered the land of Canaan. Because look what it says here, verses 7 to 12. Watch. Watch what it says. So they entered Israel, but they still didn't enter God's rest. Because the rest that God wants to enter is entering his everlasting peace and rest and comfort, where when you trust in God, he will preserve you to dwell with him forever. Right. But if you turn away... Then instead of experiencing his rest, you'll experience his wrath. Here it is. Hebrews 4, 7 to 12. He again determines a certain day. So when is God's Sabbath? Today. Right now. Look, he again determines a certain day. Today, saying through David, after so long a time, just as has been said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not enter your hearts. So when do you enter God's Sabbath? The day you believe. Right. So today, if you're the gospel and believe, today is the Sabbath. And if tomorrow comes and you still believe, that day is the Sabbath. Wow. For if Joshua had given them rest when he brought them into the land, he would not have spoken of another day after that. Because notice what he's saying. Even after Israel entered the land, David comes about four years later saying, today, if you hear his voice, do not harm your hearts. Proving that though you've entered the land of Canaan, that still doesn't mean you've entered God's rest. Wow. So what day do you enter God's Sabbath? Today when you believe the gospel. Because now notice 9 to 12. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works as God did from his there's the Sabbath commandment. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest. So how do I enter it? Lest anyone fall into the same example of disobedience. Yeah. So do you keep the Sabbath? Yes. When do you keep it? Today. And when tomorrow comes? That day. Because you're keeping God's Sabbath. Wow. 
I, I, I really understand it now, bro. That was a very so good So when they down. tell you, do you keep the Ten Commandments? Yes. The Fourth Commandment? Yes. Do you rest on Saturday? No. I rest every day because Jesus is my rest. And when I trust in Christ, I rent, entered into God's rest. Hmm. Israel's Sabbath, day of rest, is a shadow. The real Sabbath is God's rest. And the moment I believe in Christ, I've entered it, and I remain there by faith. That's why Matthew 11, 28 to 30, this is what Jesus says. And they don't like it when I say this. Oh, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Wow. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So don't let them deceive you. You are observing the Sabbath. We're in the Sabbath now. We'll be in the Sabbath tomorrow. We'll be in the Sabbath the day after. The moment you trust in Christ, that day you enter God's rest and you remain there by faith till the end. Okay. Okay. So do you think that it is wrong then for those other guys to keep the seventh day Sabbath instead of God's no, if, Sabbath? If they want to continue to observe the Sabbath of Israel, there's no fault. As long as they don't make it mandatory for you to keep it or question your salvation, and as long as they don't neglect Sunday, because the practice of the church universal, the church universal from the time of the apostles, all Christians gathered on Sunday oh. in honor of our Lord, conquering death on Sunday. So we honor him by honoring the day he destroyed sin, Satan, and the grave. But, but what if they make it mandatory just to tell other people to And they are perverting the gospel. They're going beyond what scripture teaches and what the church has taught and their Bible perverts. Mm, I see. Okay. Um, I just got one more question. I know you okay. got stuff to do. Uh, it's in uh, Acts 17. I was talking to someone and they said that uh, Paul kept the seven-day Sabbath. Of course. Who said he didn't? And? Well, well I, I'm confused because I'm, I'm a, did he keep it like the seven-day Sabbath in Acts? Did he? he kept all the Jews did. P Peter did. Because you're confusing what I just said. As Jews, who are ethnically Jews, they still obeyed those commands that the Jews kept until the time of Christ. But the same Paul is the one who didn't make it an issue for you to keep the Sabbath. Because in Romans 14, he says, for one person, he considers one day sacred. Someone else, all the days are the same. To each his own, as long as you do it unto the Lord. Oh, okay. I understand. Now, are you an ethnic Jew? N no, I'm not. I'm not. Paul was. Did Paul get circumcised? Yes. Did Paul have Jews get circumcised? Yes. In Acts, set, in Acts 16, 1 of 3, Timothy, whose mother was Jewish, Paul had him get circumcised. But then yes. Titus, who wasn't a Jew, in Galatians 1 of 3, Refuse to get circumcised. Why? Because if you read Acts carefully, not butcher it like they do, the ethnic Jews would continue to keep those commands that distinguish the Jews from the Gentiles. But mm. the same Jew said the Gentiles are not required to keep them. That's why a Gentile was not required to get circumcised. Mm. See? Yeah, I see, bro. But they tell, that tells you they're Bible perverts. They don't know the scriptures because they're taking cases where Jews who are ethnically Jewish are still keeping those commands. But in Acts 15, when there were Jews insisting, well, the Gentiles got to get circumcised too. No, they don't have to keep those commands because the Lord has freed them from that. We do it to show our love for the God of Israel, the God of Moses. But it's not mandatory. Gentiles do it. And we still observe the Sabbath. But... The practice was early and widespread. They also honored the Lord on the Lord's Day. Mm, I see. But you're not ethnically Jewish, so it doesn't concern you. Right, right. In fact, I don't know who's telling you this. Are these like black Hebrew Israelites telling you this or Seventh-day Adventists? No, they they are believers, but they, they say that. But they're not mandatory. black Hebrew Israelites? No, no, they're not. They're not black Hebrew. Are they Seventh-day Adventists? No, they're not. They, they claim to be Christian. All right, well, I'm wondering, say, okay, so you want me to keep the Sabbath. Do you also require males to get circumcised on the eighth day? Yeah. Do they? No, they don't. So then they're hypocrites. 
They're picking and choosing what they like. Hmm. Right? Right. Because the mandatory sign of the Abrahamic covenant where you'd be included in the covenant community and part of Israel is circumcision on the eighth day for males. And God says, if you don't get circumcised, you're cut off. You have nothing to do with the co co covenant community. That's Genesis right. 17. So look how they pick and choose. Well, no, you keep the Ten Commandments, but the one commandment that made you part of the covenant community so that you can observe the commandments was to get circumcised. No, that's done away with. Why? Oh, because the New Testament. Ah, thank you. So if I go to the New Testament, I see that as a Gentile, I don't need to get physically circumcised, but Paul is having Jews get circumcised still in Acts 16, 1 to 3. Right. Wow. You know why? Because he's Jewish. You got to get circumcised and be baptized. But a Gentile, all he needs is baptism. Right. Wow. Yeah. So they're, they're, they don't, this is the danger when you put the Bible in the hands of a, the wrong person. Right. I see. So can I answer your question, sir? Yeah, bro. You answered all my questions. Thank all you. All right. Very now much. go rewatch this until it comes second nature. I would, bro. Thank you. And have all a good right, evening. God bless you.